Hi friends, my name is Kelly and I'm a biologist with Trout Unlimited Canada. Now many of you might be wondering, what is a biologist? And that's a good question. A biologist is a type of scientist that studies living things. And let me tell you, there are many different types of biologists. But for me, this means studying things like fish and all the little critters in a stream. Pretty cool, eh? This is my laboratory. Another way to look at it is I'm the type of scientist that wears things like chest waders or rubber boots instead of a lab coat. Now guys, I need your help today. But before we dive into that, I want to fill you in on something that not a lot of people know about. Did you know that streams can get sick? That's right, just like you and I, streams might get fevered and might not be feeling very well sometimes. This can be the result of a variety of different things, some pretty complicated things, like climate change, poor land use practices, deforestation or clearing of trees off the landscape, or things like pollution and contaminants. All these different things will make a stream sick. The big question today is, how does a biologist know if a stream is sick or healthy? And that's what you're gonna help me with today. You're gonna help me determine if this stream is healthy or sick. So get your chest waders on or your rubber boots and come with me. Hi guys, come and join me here. We're gonna start with the basics right now by looking at the water. Let's take a water sample. So a biologist might start assessing a stream by looking at the things that our eyes can see. And we might start by questioning whether the water is clear. Is it clear or does it have a lot of things floating in it? Is there a lot of salt, uh, sediment or sand in the water? What do you guys think? It's looking pretty clear, don't you think? It's looking good. Another thing we might look at is does the water have a color to it? Now sometimes natural processes like breaking down leaves within the water will give the water a certain hue. <clears throat> Other times, things like algae or certain contaminants might color the water. So these are things that we wanna look out for. In this particular sample, the water is looking pretty colorless. So it's looking really good. One of the other things that we might look out for is does the water have an odor to it or a smell? And that seems maybe kind of funny, but it's a really good indicator for certain things like algae or contaminants or other things. So let's take a smell. What do you guys think? That smells pretty good, doesn't it? <laughs> Nothing to be concerned with here, I don't think. So those are the things that our eyes can see. But for the things that we can't see with our eyes, a biologist might take a sample of water and send it to a scientist that wears the lab coat and they would test the water for certain um, contaminants or pollutants that we might be concerned with. So another thing a biologist can do is test the temperature. So let's test the temperature now. Now this is a cold water stream, so it should be fairly cold this time of year. And that's registering at seven degrees Celsius, so that's pretty good for this time of year. Now if we wanted to know the temperature over a longer period of time, a biologist might install something like this. It's called a temperature logger. And it logs temperature every half an hour. And we can put this in maybe in the spring of the year and take it out before, uh, before winter. And we'd be able to graph all the information this logger gives us and know exactly what temperature the stream is throughout the whole entire year. It's pretty cool. So this stream is looking pretty good so far. Its water is clear and colorless and odorless. But let's take a look at some footage of some water that might not be so good. So 
You guys, next we might take a look at sediment. And maybe you're asking, what is sediment? Well, sediment is that all the material sitting on the bottom of a stream. So it might be sand, silt, clay, or leaf matter. No matter what it is, we call that sediment. And sometimes the sediment tells a story about how healthy the stream is. So I've already went ahead and I've collected some sediment off this stream bottom and it's very sandy where I collected. So I'm going to take this to one of those scientists with the lab coats and they're going to test it for any sort of pollutant or contaminant that we should be concerned about. Okay guys, now we're going to look at the benthic macroinvertebrates. And I know what you're thinking, what are those? Benthic macroinvertebrates are really just bugs. They're aquatic bugs, bugs that live in the water. These little critters can tell us a lot about the health of a stream. There are certain bugs that are very tolerant of pollution or low oxygen or just poor quality, water quality in general. There are other types of bugs that are really sensitive and they can only live in really clean water. So depending on what type of bugs we find in a stream can really reveal how healthy a stream is. So let's take a look. All right, come on guys, join me in this stream here. I'm gonna be using our handy dandy D-nets, which are a fancy net to collect benthic macroinvertebrates or aquatic bugs. It has a really, really fine mesh. So even the tiniest of bugs won't slip through. So we'll be able to collect all the little critters that live in the water and in the sediment in this stream. I'll be using a technique called kick and sweep. So I'll be kicking into the sediment, releasing all those bugs up into the water, and then sweeping with the net to collect them. Let's try it out here. Hey, check this out. In the short time that I sampled today, I was able to catch this little critter. This is called a caddisfly larvae. And in the science world, we call this a trichoptera. This is a really good sign because trichoptera are an indicator species for stream health. This is because these little critters are most abundant in clean water. They're not very tolerant of polluted water. So the fact that they're here might be a good sign that this water is fairly clean. So let's take a look at a few other benthic invertebrates that are also considered indicator species. So here we have a mayfly larvae, a water penny, a stonefly larvae, and another caddisfly larvae. So another note to add is that an even greater sign of stream health is if you can find a large diversity or collection of different types of bugs in a stream, especially if they are the type of bugs that can only live in clean water. Now let's check out some benthic invertebrates that are very tolerant of pollution or poor water quality. Now these are examples of benthic invertebrates that are fairly tolerant bugs. Here we have a leech, an aquatic worm, and a midge. These critters can handle living in streams with poor water quality. If we only found these types of bugs in a stream, it might tell us that our stream isn't very healthy. So another way a biologist might be able to tell if a stream is healthy or not is to check out the fish community that lives in the stream. So let's check the fish out now. Come on. Oh wow. Look at all the fish. Wait a second. 
There are brook trout in here. It might be tough to see, but the brook trout are the ones with the bright white leading edges of their bottom fins. That is really the most distinguishing feature that you can spot when they're swimming around. Check out this picture. It'll show it a little bit more up close. The fact that the brook trout are in this stream is a really good sign because brook trout are a really sensitive species of fish that can only survive in cold, clean water. The fact that they're here leads me to believe that the water is fairly healthy. Another component that a biologist might consider to know if a stream is healthy or not is the habitat diversity in a stream and available food sources. All the various critters that live within a stream require different habitat and food types. And in order for a stream to be healthy and fully functional, it requires all of these different types of critters. From fish to insects to frogs, turtles, birds and mammals, all of them are needed to complete the whole stream ecosystem puzzle. Let's take an underwater look to see if you can spot some different habitat types. So when we're considering different habitat types, we might look in a stream and assess whether there is a lot of wood material, whether it be logs um, or trees in a stream. It might be a lot of vegetation or plants in a stream, which could be considered habitat. Habitat might be an undercut in a bank or nooks and crannies in a rock. Habitat can look very different for all different types of critters. Now, not only would biologists consider the amount of habitat and food within a stream, we would also investigate what is beside a stream. Biologists call this the riparian area. This is essentially the amount of plants and trees that are growing beside a stream. The more plants and the more different types of plants, the better. Our riparian area here at this stream is actually pretty decent. So let's take a look at a few more photos of other stream riparian areas. Try and count how many different plants you can see along each stream. Or maybe some of these photos show a stream without any riparian area. Let me know what you think. Thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I hope you learned a lot about stream health and had some fun along the way. We'll see you next time. Bye.